So jumping right in and explaining why no contact works, what are the principles that drive it, uh, why it should be and why it might be a really good fit for you. And then I also want to explain why some people really have a problem with it, uh, areas then it might not be a good idea and reasons why you're going to instinctively feel this uh, fear or hesitancy to do no contact. And some of this just sounds like it's not very real. In other words, it sounds scientific. And what you felt in your relationship wasn't scientific. It was emotional. It was authentic. It was deep and it was powerful. So one of the reasons that, you, that a lot of people don't want to talk about no contact is because it's like a scientific, sometimes even strategic and sometimes even worse than strategic. It feels like a manipulation. But the truth is some of the reasoning behind it, when you really start to understand why it works, will kind of ease some of that fear. It'll answer some of the questions that you're having. So diving right in, I just want to explain that what happens in a relationship, and that's kind of the best place to start. You fall into love, then you go into conflict, and then you go into a place that we call numb, where you just stop losing. You start losing some of the feeling that led you to falling in love. And now those, those that attraction or that connection has dropped to the point that they no longer feel the closeness or the attraction to be with you. A lot of times while they're in that state, somebody else comes into the picture and now they have feelings for the other person. The feelings for that other person just prove to them even more that their feelings and time with you, that it's time for that to be over. So all that kind of ki kind of kicks in at the same point. One of the most powerful principles at work after a breakup is that suddenly this person who's given you a sense of value and meaning and worth consistently over time has now taken that away. And we need affection. We need a sense of meaning, a sense of belonging and being wanted. Emotionally, we need that as much as we need food and water and shelter. So when somebody who's been giving you that suddenly takes it away from you, and this is true even if you're a, a narcissist, even if you're a manipulator, it's true for good people and bad people, good intention, bad intention. Anytime somebody gives you a strong sense of value and then they pull it away from you, it rattles you. Because we're not nearly as logical as we think we are. Well, we're very logical in a lot of ways, but we're not logical when it comes to our emotions. And underneath, even that, that tendency to be intellectual about certain things, we also have a very strong component called the ego. We need to know we have a sense of worth. We need to know we have a sense of meaning. And within that ego, we also have a fear of regret, a fear of loss. What's happening a lot of times when somebody breaks up with you, Somebody that's been giving you a consistent level of love, support, worth, and value is now taking it away. It's a very natural, instinctive question to start wondering, well, what changed? Am I not as valuable as I thought I was? Am I not as good looking as I thought I was? Am I not as high worth? You start to question what somebody else has brought into question, your very worth. I talk to a lot of people sometimes. They'll set up calls with me and they'll say something like, you know, the strange thing is, Coach Ken, I was always in the power position. I was always the one that they wanted to be with me more than I wanted to be with them. She was really pushing me for marriage or he was always willing to kind of take my abuse because the truth is a lot of times I could be a handful, but he'd always apologize. He'd always be the first one to come to me. And now he broke up with me and he's just gone and it has rattled me so much more than I ever thought it would. Or the guy version of this I hear a lot of times. She'd been pushing me. She wanted to be married. She wanted to have babies. And, and now she just suddenly, now she's just gone. And it took me losing her to realize how much I love her and I'd do anything to get her back. I'm surprised by how much I miss her. I'm surprised by how much I miss her. They're going through the principle that I'm trying to describe now. That's a very natural state. But what happens when we go through that stage and now there's this internal panic? Now we think, all right, now I've got to reach out to them. I've got to prove to them that I love them. I've got to prove to them that I realize I made a mistake. I've got to win them back. Essentially, what you're trying to do is remind them what they knew not too long ago, that the two of you were great together. That the two of you belong together and you have this history and you have these recent memories of knowing that both of you knew that you belong together. So now is my time. If I jump back in, it was only last week. I mean, maybe we went away on a weekend just yesterday. It's been so close that if I just find the right words, I can pull them back in. It's an instinct. that's very logical. The problem is when you do it, you're actually soothing any sense of loss that they might have had otherwise. There's a good chance they were they were feeling stress and anxiety and that they weren't really looking forward to that conversation. They might have even imagined, well, what if I regret it? They didn't just make a decision to break up with you. They thought about it for a while, and they kind of weighed and measured and tried to imagine if they were going to regret it. Well, when they do break up with you, and you don't go into no contact, and you start chasing, you're taking away that fear of loss. You're taking away that fear of regret. And a lot of times, I use a metaphor that I'm sure you've heard before if you've seen my videos. Imagine your relationship is like a house. When they break up with you, it's like they're asking you to move out of the house. Well, if somebody's breaking up with you, you don't have a choice. So you go out the front door, 
But then when you don't go into no contact, you take away their fear of loss by camping out on the porch. What I mean is emotionally, you're just consistently reminding them, I think we'd be good together. Tell me what I need to change. Tell me what we need to do. And now I understand what you were trying to tell me and I'm ready to make the changes that you've been trying to make me to, to make for the time we've been together. I'm ready to give you the commitment. The more you're trying to reclaim and remind them of how strongly they felt about you in the past, the more you make it impossible for them to get a sense of loss from you. You can't miss somebody that's on the porch. Imagine if I walked up to your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend and I said, hey, are you second guessing the breakup? Do you miss them? I don't have to miss them. They're right there. Look, they just sent me a text. Look, they just had a friend reach out to me. Oh, look, they're knocking on my door. Literally, when you don't go into no contact, you're making it impossible for them to miss you because they've never lost you. And you're just reminding them consistently. It's like you're becoming the safety net. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they're on the trapeze, right? Now they're back into the dating field or they feel a little bit like they're in a, a dangerous spot because they just let go of somebody that they know that they had and they're a little scared. That fear, a lot of times, is going to what helps bring them back to you. But if you keep reminding them that they don't have to worry about losing you, they haven't lost you. Keep in mind, right after a breakup, the person who broke up doesn't actually get the weight or the sense of loss. Because think of a, a relationship as access. In other words, the person you're dating or in love with is the person that gives you the most access to really everything. Well, when somebody breaks up with you, what they're really doing is revoking your access to them, to their presence, to their affection, uh, sexually, financially, to their comfort, to their encouragement. Well, when somebody breaks up with you, you're the only one that loses access to everything. In other words, God forbid, my wife comes home and she tells me she wants a divorce and she packs a bag and she goes to a hotel. Now, out of the two of us, I'm the only one that's lost access and I've lost all of it in that situation. I can't call her and, and ask what we're having for breakfast. I can't call her and ask her if we're going to watch Modern Family tonight while we're going to sleep. She just told me she doesn't want to be with me anymore. Suddenly, somebody that I knew was going to be there in my life as a, as a source of comfort, as a source of reassurance, because life can be hard for anybody, is now just gone. Now I feel alone. I'm questioning everything about myself, and I can't reach out to her to get a, a, a sense of reassurance. What about her on her end? Of course she can. She just broke up with me. I'm rattled. So the person who did the breaking up a lot of times still has the comfort and the strength and feels reinforced by the relationship, even if they just ended that relationship. So my wife knows, God forbid, if this played out, that she could call me at two o'clock in the morning and I'm going to answer the phone. I'm going to be like, oh, I'm so glad you called. Can we please talk? Well, I can't talk right now, but I could talk at seven o'clock in the morning if you bring pancakes and if you bring oatmeal and if you bring uh, prime rib and shrimp, whatever she told me that she needed from me in that moment, she probably knows I'd be willing to do. In other words, my access to her has been revoked. Her access to me has been increased completely. Their sense of worth, their sense of ego is actually taking a rise. They feel better about themselves at a time when you feel less about yourself. This imbalance is not attractive. One of the things that no contact can do quickly is it can give both people a sense of loss. Now, as scary as that feels, that sense of loss is important. They need to know. They need to have some kind of evidence that they're actually risking something very valuable. If they don't have that sense of loss or potential loss, then what's going to bring them back to you? Why would they miss something that they know they haven't lost? And if they're breaking up with you to be with somebody else, well, now they have two people giving them a sense of worth. If their ego's right here, they broke up with you and you're chasing. That new person is giving them a sense of ego and they're here. Now they have two people feeding their sense of worth while you have lost the one that you had. So you're at a disadvantage. But if you go into no contact, even if they found somebody else, let them focus on that new person. Let them find out that they're flawed. They'll have a much harder time falling in love with a new person if you're not strengthening that new relationship by your pursuit. If you pursue, you'll become a bonding agent with that new relationship. They'll be asking that new person, yeah, did you know that they reached out to me? Yeah, they're still trying to get me back. What did you say? I told them no. Oh, yeah, do you think they'll believe you now? Do you think she'll let you go? I don't know. I mean, they, they seem pretty hurt. Oh, that's sad. And now they're talking about you, and you're actually reinforcing this new relationship. You don't want to do that. So in no contact, a lot of times it really catches them off guard. They anticipated an argument. They anticipated some resistance. And maybe initially, before you found out about no contact, maybe you gave it to them. Maybe you did chase. Maybe you did plead. And you're watching these videos because you realize the more you pleaded and tried to pursue, the further away they went. That's why they went further away. One of the things that's going to hit you, we call it like a fear of logic. It's logic and fear. They double team and they make it really hard to do no contact. 
your logic is going to say, well, the further away they get every day that they spend away from you, they're getting stronger and more, more certain that they don't need you. That's not true. That sounds true because it sounds logical, but human beings aren't as logical as we believe they are. We're not as logical as we wish that we were. So stop telling yourself that a scenario that I hear a lot is that there were two of us in this relationship. They broke up with me and now there's only one of us fighting for this relationship. If I go into no contact, it's like I'm not fighting for the relationship and now nobody is and we have no chance. That's not true. If you have one person fighting for the relationship, it's a lie. You don't have a relationship. If I started writing fan mail to Jennifer Aniston, I could say there's one person fighting for this relationship, but I would be delusional. We don't have a relationship if there's only one person. And it covers up the real question. The real question is what can one person do to make the other person second guess and re-examine the loss? Well, to get that second person to come back and wonder if they made a mistake, you have to project more strength than you might feel. Imagine you're breaking up with somebody and they begged and pleaded and got on their hands and knees and said they would do anything to make you change your mind. That might be flattering, but it wouldn't actually increase attraction because it's not projecting strength. It's reinforcing a, an inferior position. It's projecting weakness and dependence. Dependence is not attractive. Now imagine you're breaking up with the same person and they said, oh, wow, I didn't see that coming, but okay. Actually, there was a really cute guy that asked me out yesterday, so I think I'm just going to go find his number and say yes to him. All right, well, thanks for letting me know. The person who actually takes it and shows the more strength is the person that we're going to naturally second guess losing. So no contact is projecting strength, but, but a lot of times we'll tell ourselves, yeah, but it's projecting strength that's not true. So I'm being a fake and I would rather lose somebody being authentic then win them back through manipulation. Hey, I understand that. I respect that thought process. I do. But stop and think about it for a minute. It, you're not really being as honest as you think you're being, right? In other words, when somebody breaks up with you, if you love them, you're going to be in a lot of pain. So sometimes we confuse who we really are with who we are when we're in pain. Let me explain. So in other words, again, I'll, God forbid, using my wife as an example. If she broke up with me, I'll tell you right now, I have no problem admitting it would devastate me. It would absolutely, it would, it would crush me. But if I act in the middle of that pain, is that really the truest version of me? Like right now, if somebody broke in here and set me on fire, then my volume, my words, my choice, my attitude, my emotions, everything would change. Would that be authentic reaction? Would that still be me? Yeah, that would be me. That's the authentic me when I'm in real pain. But that's not actually the truest version of me. So a lot of times when we've had our heart broken, we're telling ourselves, I'm going to go outside their window and stand in the middle of the rain with a boombox over my head playing the, our love song. I want to find a way to remind them of how much I love them. That's authentic me. Maybe, maybe that's authentic you in pain. Maybe the most authentic version of you is the one that it's hard to be in touch with right now. That part of you that knows that you're worthy of being treated with respect. The part of you that knows that you're worthy of consistent love. The part of you that knows that you're worthy of somebody not cheating on you, not lying to you not casting you aside and rejecting you. Maybe under all, underneath all that pain, the most authentic version of you would actually act stronger than the version of you would act that's in so much pain. So it might feel like you're acting, but think of it like this. You're not acting. You're not, you're not being a fraud. You're not, you're not trying to manipulate somebody to get you back. Think of it like this. What you're really trying to do is remember the strongest and truest version of yourself, the confident version of yourself. And act like that version of you, even though you don't feel like that version of you. Because that's actually the more authentic version of you, and it's also the most attractive. And that's the way to win somebody back. So no contact, and I'm not telling you no contact uh, should work because that person is worthy of, of, of you winning back. Maybe you're doing no contact to win somebody back that has never been worthy of you. Maybe you're trying to win back a manipulator. Maybe you're trying to win back a habitual cheater. That's not my business. I'm just trying to explain to you why no contact works. Now, the truth is it works on good people and bad people. And yeah, there is such a thing. There are people with good intentions who are transparent and sincere. And there are people that are self-centered and that will keep manipulating you. No contact works on both. Does it work in every situation? No, I'll tell you it doesn't work in every situation. But it works in the majority of situations. And it works on good people and bad people. If it's a manipulator, it works because no contact, you're projecting strength which makes them second guess the value of the person they're letting go. And even a manipulator has an ego. So um, when a manipulator breaks up with you and you don't beg and chase and plead, but you project strength, it actually wounds their ego. A narcissist has a massive ego. 
I can't tell you the times I've had a narcissist set up a call with me to try to win somebody back that they lost. Well, why would a narcissist care about losing somebody? Because if you're strong enough to walk away from a narcissist, it really makes them kind of reconsider themselves. Well, wait a minute. I know why I don't want to be with them, but I'm amazing. Why don't they want to be with me? So you can create real panic even in a narcissist with no contact. It works for different reasons for different people. With a good person, it might make them wake up and realize they're about to lose somebody of tremendous value and that they're not going to just be waiting around hoping for another chance. With a bad person, it's more about their ego and it'll pull them back. So that's kind of that's kind of why it works. It just reframes who you are and it makes them recognize that you're just not a safety net for them. The other reason people think it doesn't work or they, they're really against it, it's not just that it feels, well, it feels like I'm being inauthentic. It feels like I'm manipulating. Like I said, but we just covered that. The other thing is people will say this and they'll say it in the comments below because I don't even think they watch the videos. They just like to make comments on, on videos about winning your ex back. You should never take somebody back that broke up with you. Hey, sometimes I completely agree with that. Sometimes you might have been the jerk. Maybe you were the douchebag. Maybe you, were, maybe you were the overly critical, ungrateful, not encouraging, not loving person. Look, a lot of times there are relationships. Of course, there are relationships that you shouldn't want back, but you still want them back. Other times there are people that break up with you because you made the mistake. So this idea that you're supposed to just walk away and never try to win somebody back because if they broke up with you, they're not worthy of you. That, that's a very narcissistic view to take. Because it just assumes that anybody that broke up with you, it couldn't have been your fault. Well, maybe the breakup is a wake up call to you and you're watching this video to try to find a way to give to let somebody give you another chance. That does happen just because you were a douchebag or just because you took them for granted doesn't mean you shouldn't get another chance. So that argument really isn't even worth a lot of time. And I hope I just kind of explained why if you see that in the comment, but sometimes it, it feels right, right? Sometimes it is right. Having the understanding of why no contact works is one thing. And even understanding the principles enough that you can start engaging in it. But understand in the middle of no contact, maintaining it's going to be hard because logic is going to keep rushing in. Well, it's been two weeks. It's been three weeks. It's been four weeks. Oh, Coach Lee. Ooh, Coach Ken said after 30 days, your chances go way down. Look, enough. there are enough situations. We, Me and Coach Lee have both seen plenty of situations when somebody comes back well after 30 days. I've seen 30, 60, 90. I've seen 11 months. I've seen two years. I've seen five years. So the truth is just that maintenance of no contact is the hardest part, right? If you're doing no contact the right way, here's the good news. It's the best way to get over somebody. It's the most effective way to win them back. Winning somebody back and becoming strong enough to live without them are the same plan. And so sometimes just take a deep breath and give yourself permission to not decide which one you want to do right now. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know if I want to do no contact or if I just want to let them go and move on with my life. If you're having that thought, here's the good news. It's the same plan. You don't have to decide and you might find yourself going back and forth. One day thinking you're going to walk on and get over it. The other day thinking, no, it's worth one more try. Well, it's the same plan. You don't really have to decide until they come back. And then people say, well, what if they never come back? Well, same thing applies. It's the best plan to get over them. Because as you're improving yourself and proving that you're strong enough, resilient enough, and capable of living an intriguing life without them, you're not only proving it to the person that broke up with you, you're reminding yourself just how valuable you are. So some of those questions are just distraction questions. Should I get over them or should I do no contact to win them back? It's a distraction question. It doesn't matter. What if no contact doesn't work? It's a distraction question. It doesn't matter. So let me know if I can help. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can reach me at dotheyloveme.com or reach me in the comments below. And just let me know what, what other videos you'd like to get information on. Thanks a lot.